Give God 90, where we're not afraid of the tough biblical questions, because we will dig through the language, the culture, and the history to find the truth revealed in the words of our Creator. Happy Monday, everyone. Yeah, that can be a thing. (laughs) (laughs) After all, it is the second day of the week. (laughs) Yes. So... (laughs) I I am being closely supervised and monitored this morning. Good morning, everyone. Uh, the other day when we were in town, there was a young girl wearing a t-shirt or sweatshirt that I probably should have, and it said something like, "Don't blame me. I was left unsupervised." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that can happen. Uh, if you're new here, yes, we do have a little bit of fun while we're doing this. After all, <laughs> who invented humor? <laughs> um, don't forget, if you haven't been to Give God 90 lately, there's some interesting things there for you, all free. Um, mostly because I don't want to be the one to deal with having to ship things out. <laughs> it's just not who I am. I don't have time for that. Um, if you are interested in giving gifts this season, books are always a good thing to do, and there's three to choose from, so don't forget that. You know, every so often, somebody uh, will mention something, and it, it causes me to consider that, you know, over the centuries have we lost the meaning of what was written. And, and of course, we talk about that a lot. And we have, and some of it's due to incorrect interpretation, some of it's due to translation, some of it's due to the evolution of language. Um, There was someone mentioning the other night, walking in the way. And um, the person who was talking about it, I know clearly understood, and, and I will say that that particular person does try, Sometimes they uh, wonder if they're trying hard enough, but they do try. (laughs) And um, it made me ask the question, how many people use words they think sound biblical, um, but they don't understand completely what they mean? Sometimes they don't completely understand what they're reading. I've heard people over the years uh, talk about walking in the way, but I'm I'm certain that some of them, and I am including a lot of preachers and pastors, have absolutely no idea what it actually means. Um, and And I would guess that many people who do know what it means often find themselves sort of veering off the path, right? You know, they, they do something that, well, this looks more beneficial. That looks more fun. And after a short time, they realize that they have found themselves on a path that leads to destruction or death. Sounds kind of gloomy this time of year, doesn't it? <laughs> but it, but it's true. You know, a lot of people, and a, a lot of good people, a lot of good people um, often find themselves going astray in the last book of Moses in Deuteronomy he tells the people therefore because of everything I've just said in other words you will keep the commandments of Jehovah your God walking in his ways and fearing him there's a good biblical saying right you got to walk in his ways more than 10 times more than 10 times 
it mentions walking in his way. But that's not the first time we see that concept in the Bible. Hmm. Hmm. Now, when I was looking at this, I thought, I wonder. I just wonder because people years ago didn't have cars, they didn't have taxis, they didn't have Uber. If you weren't rich, if you weren't wealthy, you probably didn't have uh, a beast of burden either. You didn't have you know the donkeys or the mules or the horses to uh, carry you around. So you walked everywhere you went. Made me think. And um, if you do the word study on walk, you find something interesting. If you look at Genesis 12, 1, Jehovah said to Abraham, or Abram at the time, leave your country, your kindred, and your father's household, and go to the land I will show you. Now, a more literal translation would be, Jehovah said to Abraham, Walk out of your country and from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. Now, if we think about that for a second, does that mean that Abraham, or Abram, before he was Abraham, yeah, even I have kind of a hard time keeping that straight sometimes, um, Does that mean that he was walking in the way? Well, of course it does. You see, the same root word for uh, go or get away or get out, depending on the context, is the same as the root word for walk. And before we get into the verses that refer to walking in the way, and when I say walking in the way, we're talking about walking in the way follows God's instructions. Um, let's look at some of the opposite things that that uh, we might consider. So here's a couple of passages. Did we not say to you in Egypt, leave us alone so that we may serve the Egyptians? For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness, Exodus fourteen twelve. If only we had died by the Lord's hand in the land of Egypt, they said. There we sat by pots of meat and ate our fill of bread. But you have brought us into this desert to starve this whole assembly to death, Exodus sixteen three. Why is the Lord bringing us into this land to fall by the sword? Our wives and children have become plunder. Would it not be better for us to go back to Egypt? So they said to one another, Let us appoint a leader and return to Egypt. Numbers 14, verse 3 and 4. So, you know, the, the, the people that came out of Egypt often wanted to just turn around and go back. They said, Oh... Look at look at what you've done. They were tired. They were hungry. They were thirsty, or something just didn't seem right about their new life, their new uh, existence. You know these these people that left Egypt. They lost their homes. They lost some of their friends because not everybody came out. Um, they lost their employer. <laughs> you know that's kind of a strange way to look at that. I know, but who was their employer? Who was taking care of them? They were basically dependent on the Pharaoh of Egypt at the time. They were pretty much unprepared for their new life because they didn't know how to contend with it. And they thought they were more comfortable in their misery, in in the misery of their slavery, than in their freedom. That sounds a little weird too, doesn't it? They were more comfortable in the misery of being a slave than in being free. <laughs> now, I, I would imagine that um, there are a 
lot of people that might be new to the faith who feel the same way. Right? They they just kind of want to go back to the way things were. Doing the things they knew, doing the things they were comfortable with, no matter how much they complained or cried or whined about it. And that's a lot, in a way, like an addict trying to recover. You know, just just one more. I just I just need one more hit. And I'll feel better. I just need one more drink and I'll feel better. I just need one more whatever and I'll feel better. We could also say the same thing. You know, it, it's kind of like an abused spouse or an abused child. You know, they want that feeling of security, even though it's a false security. Maybe you have some of the same feelings, wonder, wondering, you know, is this new way I'm following really all it's promised to be? Maybe it's because you're afraid of what's going to happen next. You know, there's a, a lot of verses in the Bible that describe that. One very famous one. Maybe you're trying to plow a field and you're looking back. You, you want to move forward, but you just can't keep yourself from wondering, you know, was I better off back there? I didn't have people making fun of me. I didn't have people persecuting me. I didn't have, yeah, you did. It was just different people, <laughs> right? The, the, the folks that you were surrounded with thought, you know, maybe you were a party animal. I don't know. But now all of a sudden, those people, people who you thought used to care for you and used to be your friends are making fun of you for choosing a more righteous lifestyle. So let's get to the good part. Um, actually, if you want to read some of those or all of those verses. And thou shalt teach them ordinances and laws and shall show them the way wherein they must walk and the work that they must do, Exodus 18.20. Ye shall walk in all the ways which the Lord your God hath commanded you, that ye may live, and that ye may be well with you, and that ye may prolong your days in the lands which ye shall possess, Deuteronomy 5.33. So know in your heart that just as a man disciplines his son, so the Lord your God disciplines you. Therefore, you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God, walking in his ways and fearing him. Deuteronomy 8, verse 5 and 6. So that they may fear you and walk in your ways all the days that they live in the land that you gave to our fathers. Second Chronicles six thirty one. Blessed are those whose ways are blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Psalms one nineteen one. A song of ascents. Essence. Essence. Blessed are all who fear the Lord, who walk in his ways. Psalms 128.1. So, all, you know, did you hear all the promises? You know, all of the promises that the people who follow the Creator's instructions receive. And, and if you're wondering, um, this is you know, carried out through the New Testament as well. Um, listen as Luke describes uh, a couple of people. In the time of Herod, king of Judah, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly division of Abiah and whose wife Elizabeth was the daughter of Aaron. Both of them were righteous in the sight of God walking blamelessly in all the commandments and decrees of the Lord. Luke chapter 1, verses 5 and 6. So, and Zechariah uh, Zachari and Elizabeth were, of course, the parents of the person known as John the Baptist. They're described as walking blamelessly in the commandments 
walking blamelessly in the way. Now, I know a lot of pastors in the past have said, oh, if you just do this, if you just believe everything's going to be you know, a cakewalk, everything's going to come up roses, you know, your life will just automatically, overnight, get better. Um, they were wrong. <laughs> your life doesn't automatically get better. Sometimes... Um, for a, a period of time, it can seem to get worse, just like the Israelites when they left Egypt. I should say just like when the mixed multitude left Egypt. What happened? They complained. They wanted to go back. Of course we're going to experience hardship when we walk in the way of the Creator. But the hardships that we experience when we don't are far greater think about that we're warned repeatedly you know don't turn from his way don't leave his path and i know that because some have said the path must be narrow because the gate's narrow well the path is wide when we do as much good as we can you know, I, isaiah actually describes it as a highway and as i in isaiah 35 8 <clears throat> there will be a highway called the way of holiness. The unclean will not travel it, only those who walk in the way. He goes on to say, and fools will not stray onto it. You can't just stumble onto it. You have to be consciously looking for it. You know, in, in Isaiah's time, there were small paths and there were wider roads that would allow for people who would travel with animals. You know, they could travel easily for trade or whatever, whatnot. And he didn't use the word for a small, narrow path. He uses the word to describe a wide road. And even Solomon picks up on that in Proverbs sixteen seventeen. The highway, the highway of the upright, leads away from evil. He who guards his way protects his life. And, and he also uses this uh, in an analogy when he writes, do not swerve to the right or the left. Turn your feet away from evil. That's Proverbs 4.27. You see, there's much, much freedom uh, to love and do good on the highway that follows the Creator's instructions. But leaving that highway leads to evil. It leads to death. It leads to destruction. We don't think often today of narrow roads, right? Because a lot of pl- a lot of people live in places where there are wide roads. But where we are now, we have some of those windy, hilly, swervy <laughs> country roads that are usually wide enough for two cars to pass at the same time. <laughs> Although they're not too far from here, there is a one-lane bridge. But if you think about a wide road that leads to a narrow gate, you have this big wide road where you can do all the good you can do. You can love your neighbor. You can do all those things. And if you do it, you're going. it's going to lead you to this narrow gate. But the interesting thing is, you can get as many people doing good through that narrow gate as will fit. The ones who don't aren't even on that road. That's why it's so easy for all the people doing good, loving each other, loving your neighbor, loving yourself. That's why it's so easy for them to get through the gate. But if you veer off the road, if you veer, if you exit the highway today's language you're not even going to get to the gate how many of you really want to get to the gate you have to stay on the road you have to stay on the highway you can't exit 
You can't go to the right. You can't go to the left. Because as you go down those roads, the only way to get back to the highway, oh, is to turn around. What's that word for turn around again? Oh, repent. Yeah, that's what you have to do. And then you have to get back on the road. The thing is, as you repent and head back to the highway, you're going to have all these other people who followed that same exit looking at you going, why are you going that way? You know, isn't it more fun up ahead? No, it's not. Not at all. It might seem like it till you get to that particular destination, which will eventually uh, lead to a diving board that takes you into that lake of fire. Think about that one. Um, I'm going to end the day with something, and, and it's a very much overlooked verse. And it's uh, in John's last letter. And hopefully it will give you something to think about. John writes, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Now, we know John didn't have any children. right? So he's not talking about his children. Whose children is he talking about? He's talking about the Creator's children. And truth is the words that the Creator has spoken. So the Almighty is basically saying, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in my way. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in my way. That's something for you to think about until Thursday. And until then, we wish you many, many blessings, everyone. Yes, we do. Be blessed.